Hey everyone, today we're gonna be talking about multiplying binomials. Now last time we talked about adding and subtracting polynomials. Today we're gonna narrow our focus down to what's called a binomial and then how to multiply two binomials. So with that said, I guess we need to talk about the term binomial, okay? Our objective today is again to be able to multiply binomials. And I'm gonna share with you two different methods but really, we're really going to focus on one method uh, moving forward. It's a more analytical way, and it's the way that you're going to be um, expected to, to be able to use regularly in, in future math classes. So with that said, um, let's go ahead and try these two problems. These are just um, problems that you should be able to do. So go ahead and do them on the left-hand side, and then uh, so pause the video, and then come back and watch it when you're done. For number one, it says, what is the area of the rectangle below? Well, we have a rectangle that has a length, a length of 3x minus 2 and a height of 5x. And if you remember, the area of a rectangle is always equal to the length times the width. Now, you may remember it also as base times height, but regardless, it's still length times width. You could also say, that is width times length. It doesn't really matter how you write that because multiplication is something that's called, it's called commutative. You can rearrange the order of multiplication and still get the same answer. So in this case, we could label either this the length and this the width or vice versa, it doesn't matter. But when I go to simplify that or I go to plug those things in, ultimately I'm gonna get 5x times 3x minus two. Okay, so there's my width, there's my length. Now, if you put them in the different order, you put 3x minus 2 times 5x, that's fine. I'm going to go ahead and do that off to the side so you can see the comparison. But the bottom line is we have something that we should be familiar with. We have the idea of distribution here. We need to multiply this term to both of these terms because that's in parentheses. So when I do that, when I do that, we have to ask ourselves, what is 5x times 3x? Well, I'm going to do a little scratch work here, kind of off to the side. 5x times 3x is the same as saying 5 times 3 times x times x. Because remember, 5x really just means 5 times x. 3x means 3 times x. And just like I just said, multiplication is commutative. So you can rearrange the numbers in any order you want as long as it's all multiplication and you'll get the same answer. And so now we can multiply the 5 and the 3 and we end up with 15 and we multiply the x times the x and we would end up with x squared. x times x is x squared. Okay, And you should know that, recognize that as rules of exponents because really this is x to the first times x to the first. And when we multiply these things, we actually add the exponents. So we end up with x squared, okay? So with that said, looking at this um, area, 5x times 3x is going to be 15x squared, all right? And then the next part, the 5x times the negative 2. Well, I'll go ahead and do that off to the side too, just so you can see this. 5x times negative 2. Again, we can rearrange it so that the coefficients or the numeric values are out front. So we have five times negative two and then times X, and that simplifies to negative 10 X. So we would put minus 10 X and that is our area expression. Okay. So that is something that you want to be familiar with that when you're multiplying, you can rearrange them. Now you don't necessarily have to rearrange them every single time. You can, um, you can kind of shortcut it a little bit and just say five times three is 15 and X times X is X squared. We're okay with that. All right, number two, number two is what we did yesterday. We are subtracting these two polynomials, poly meaning multiple. And we'll talk more about that on the next slide. So we have, we have seven X minus two X cubed minus four, all subtracted by, 8 plus 4x minus 5x cubed. Now you remember yesterday um, when we're multiple or sorry adding or subtracting polynomials, we put a 1 out front here, and then we distribute that 1 into 
the trinomial here. So 1 times 7x is 7x. 1 times negative 2x cubed is negative 2x cubed. And then 1 times negative 4 is negative 4. We do the same thing on the other one, but this time it's a subtract one. It's a minus 1, negative 1. So we need to make sure we distribute the negative as well. So when I multiply that all out, I end up with minus 8, minus 4x, and plus 5x cubed because negative 1 times all those changes the sign. Now notice in this case, it's a little different than the previous case. The previous case, we were multiplying terms together. In this case, we are just combining like terms. So when we multiply the 5x and the 3x, we can do that. We can multiply any two things that we want and get something out. Notice when I multiply, the exponents change, right? When I add or subtract, when I combine like terms, I am combining terms that have the same variable and the same exponent. The, the term doesn't change, which means the exponent won't change. So let's go ahead and identify the like terms, and we want to write it in standard form. So the highest exponent is x cubed, so we're going to combine those there. What is negative 2x cubed plus 5x cubed? And again, I'll show that work off to the side here so that we can see the difference between multiplying and then adding. Here I've got negative 2x cubed minus 5x cubed. When I'm combining, I'm thinking, okay, what do these have in common? These have x cubed in common. Well, what's left over after I take that out? A negative 2 and a negative 5. And then I can combine those to be negative 7x cubed. Okay. Again, when I'm adding or subtracting terms, I do not change the variable. I do not change the exponent. I am just asking how many x cubes do I have, okay? So I have negative 2 and 5. So I have negative, sorry, oh, I messed that up. That should be a plus 5, a plus 5, which actually makes this a 3x cubed. So I'm going to cross that out there. That's going to be 3x cubed. Um, again, exponents don't change here, but up here when you're multiplying, they do. All right, the next highest term is the x. The exponent there is 1. So showing that work off to the side, it would be 7x minus 4x. And then the x is what both, both of those have in common. So we get 7 minus 4 left over. And then we'd say 7 minus 4 is 3x. And so we can write that down as plus 3x. And then our last common term, like term, is the negative 4 and the negative 8. Now, I don't need to show the work off to the side there. What is negative 4 minus 8? Or negative 4 plus negative 8, that's negative 12. And so that's just a quick review of subtracting polynomials, okay? Now, with that said, let's go ahead and look at some definitions here. You're going to want to write this down on the right-hand side. A monomial is a polynomial with one term in it. Now, remember, a polynomial is an expression that only has variables and whole number exponents, okay? It can have numbers, coefficients out front, but it has to have whole number exponents. A monomial is just a very specific type of polynomial. It's one where there's only one term. Whereas here, when we were adding and subtracting these polynomials, this is multiple terms. So we call it a polynomial, multiple, right? This is a monomial because there's only one term. So 8, negative 2x, 3x squared, 5x to the 8, those are all considered monomials in a sense because they are all individual one term, okay? The next term is a binomial, bi meaning two, ma meaning one, bi meaning two. So a binomial is a polynomial with two terms, a polynomial with two terms. And so we would have something like this, the 3x plus two, or 4x squared minus 7x, or 9x to the fifth minus 7x, okay? And you can see in our examples that we had a minute ago, this 5x is considered a monomial, and then the 3x minus two is considered a binomial because there's two terms. Here, what do we have? The 7x minus 2x cubed minus 4, what would we call that? Well, that's called a trinomial because there are three terms. And so we have that, the trinomial. A trinomial, a trinomial is a polynomial with three terms. Look at that. It's just a progression. And so we end up with examples that are maybe negative x squared minus 3x plus 9 or 7x to the 4th plus 8x to the 4th, sorry, 7x to the 6th plus 8x to the 4th minus 5. Just notice that there's three terms that are being added or subtracted. Okay, that's a trinomial. Now, anything greater than a trinomial, we don't have a specific term for it necessarily. Uh, we don't really deal with them too much. 
Um, you'll see how the monomial, binomial, and trinomial kind of relate in just a minute. But anything greater than that, we would just name it by its degree. And so remember, um, we talked about the degree. Uh, for example, in this trinomial, this is a sixth degree uh, polynomial, or to be more specific, a six degree trinomial. If there was four terms, we would just say it's a six degree polynomial. Okay. All right. With that said, let's go ahead and take uh, a look at something interesting here. Now, you don't need to write this slide down. I just wanted to share with you an idea of multiplication. Now, you may have um, learned this in the past, but I'm going to show you a different way to multiply, I think. It, you might be familiar with this, and that's great if you are. It'll actually help you understand what we're doing a little bit more later on. So we are normally used to, okay, how do I multiply um, two-digit numbers? 32 times 24, we stack them, and then we multiply the 4 times the 2, right? The 4 times the 2, which is 8. Then we multiply the 4 times the 3, which is 12, and put that next to it. We put a 0 as a placeholder, and then 2 times 2 is 4, and 2 times 3 is 6, and then we add them together and we end up with 768. That is the most efficient way to multiply by hand, okay? But there is another way, okay? We can rewrite the 32 and the 24 in two different ways or in a different way for each one of those. We could write the expression 32 times 24 as 32 times parentheses 20 plus four because if you think of your order of operations, 20 plus four is 24. So 32 times 24, it's the same thing there. Now we could go ahead and multiply those by distributing. Well, 32 times 20 is 640. How did I know that so quickly? Because 32 times 2 is 64, and then we put a zero at that, basically. And then 32 times 4 is 128, and then we'd add those together, and lo and behold, we get the same answer, 768. But I want to break it down even further. I want to break it down so that I have just the tens place with a zero for each term. So I got 30 plus two and 20 plus four. That's 32, that's 24, it's the same thing. How could I multiply these two things together? Well, what I can do is I can actually break it apart. And this is gonna be the routine when we multiply binomials. We're gonna write it like this. We're gonna say 30, I'm gonna go ahead and write this down. Uh, 32, 32 times 24, is the same as 30 plus 2 times 20 plus 4. Okay, that's what I had. But I could break this down even further to say 30 times 20 plus 4, okay, plus 2 times 20 plus 4. All right? 2 times 20 plus 4. And you're going to see that this ends up being the same thing. Notice what I did is I just took this 30 plus 2 and I wrote the second term right next to each one of those, okay? So 30 times 20 is easy. Three times two is six. And then we have two zeros afterwards, right? When we're distributing that, okay? 30 times 20 is 600. And then 30 times four, that should be easy as well. Three times four is 12. And then the zero is added on at the end. And then we'll multiply the, the next term, two times 20. Well, two times two is four and put a zero at the end. And then two times four is just eight. And so now we can see a bunch of terms with zeros at the end, and we can add these up very easily. This is 600 plus 120, well, that's 720, plus 40 is 760, plus eight is 768. And that's exactly what we had in our original answer here. Now, some people might be going, why would you spend all that time showing that and doing all that? Well, there's two reasons. Number one, this kind of gets difficult to, to do in your head. But if you can break it down like, um, like this, like I showed you here, uh, you can actually solve this in your head if you're good at it, okay? That's how a lot of people can multiply really fast because they think like this, okay? The other reason is because sometimes you don't know um, all the numeric values. You may have variables involved here. And so we'll see an example of that in a second, but I just wanted to show you a different way to multiply so that we can use that different way to multiply polynomials in general. Okay. Now this is going to look a little different. Um, we'll go over this a, a little bit more, but 30 times 20 is 600. And then two times 20 is 40. And then 30 times four is 120. 
and 30, uh, sorry, two times four is eight. And so we can add all those up and get 768. That looks a little bit different order than what I did here. I wanted to break it down like this for you here because this is how we're gonna move forward. But notice the bottom line is we are multiplying the 30 by both of these terms in here, and we're multiplying the two by both of these terms in here, okay? So let's go ahead and take a look at, you guys can go ahead and practice this if you want. That, that's probably a good idea. Go ahead and do this off to the side. Try doing 53 times 41 this way, okay? And then come back and watch this to see how you did. All right, so 53 times 41, 53 times 41, we're gonna break that down to say 50 plus three times 40 plus one. And so we would say, okay, we're gonna rewrite 50 plus three times 40 plus one as 50 times 40 plus one, and then plus three times 40 plus one. And then we can multiply those easy, easily enough. That's 2000 plus 50 plus 120 plus three. And so we end up with 2,173, I believe. Okay. 2,173. And that's what we get here. All right. Let's go ahead and use this to multiply uh, binomials. All right. So we got 50 plus three times 40 plus one. We already did that. And notice I'm just going to multiply it out like I did in, the, in another frame. I got 50 times 40 is 2,000. I'm gonna do the same thing here, 2x times x. Remember, we are adding exponents here, so that's 2x squared. And then, let me shrink this down a bit. All right, and then we did the 50 times, or sorry, the 50 times one, which is 50, and 2x times four is 8x, doing the same thing. Three times 40 is 120, three times x is 3x, and then three times one is three, so three times four is 12. I'm just trying to show you the comparisons between there. The reason we had to do this here is because we didn't have uh, numeric values here. We had some variables. And now we can combine like terms. The x squared is all by itself, so we have 2x squared. And then we have the 8x plus the 3x, which is 11x. And then we have the 12, and that is our answer. Notice, when you multiply binomials, you end up with a trinomial. Now, I know I went quickly through that. I'm going to go through another example so you guys can see a little bit more detail of what I'm actually looking for in terms of work. This is just so you can see that when, when we're multiplying numbers, you can do the same thing as when you're multiplying binomials. Okay. So here is actually what I want you to do here is treat number one as an example. So put this number one in the right hand side. And then number two, you're going to put on the left hand side. All right. So for number one, for number one, we're going to treat this as an example. Number one says x plus five times x plus seven. Pretty simple one. Now, how did I break it down according to these multiplication rules here? Well, I rewrote this. I rewrote the 30 plus two times 20 plus four as 30 times all of the second term. And then plus two times all of the second term. We're going to do the same thing here x times all of the second term, so times x plus 7, and then 5 times all of the second term, so 5 times x plus 7. If you did this right, you should always have the second binomial written down twice. Then we'll go ahead and distribute. x times x is x squared, and then x times 7 is 7x, and then 5 times x is 5x, and then five times seven is 35, okay? And then we're gonna go ahead and combine like terms. The x squared is its only term. That's the only one with the, the squared as the exponent. Then the seven x and the five x go together. Seven x plus five x is 12 x. And then the last one, the 35, oops, wrong color. The 35 is all by itself, so we're gonna put plus 35 there. So that's essentially what you do. Um, number two is a little bit more detailed, a little bit more difficult because we have an X and a Y there, but go ahead and give it a try and see what you come up with and then come back and see how you did. Okay. For number two, we have three X plus Y 
times 2x plus 4y. Now, we're not going to focus too much on this type um, for this year, but when you get to Math 3, you will. We're going to rewrite this as 3x times 2x plus 4y plus, parentheses there, y times 2x plus 4y. Okay, so we're, we're breaking down the first term to be 3x and y here, and then we're rewriting the second term twice next to those two terms in the first one. We'll go ahead and distribute here. We got 3x times 2x. Well, that's going to be 3 times 2 is 6. x times x is x squared. And then 3x times 4y. Some of you might be saying, I can't do that because those aren't like terms. You're correct that they're not like terms, but it's okay because we're not adding or subtracting. We are multiplying. So 3 times 4 is 12, and then x times y, well, we can't really add exponents there because they are two different variables, so we just write x, y. So that's what we get for the first set. And then y times 2x, we always want to deal with the coefficients first. Remember the coefficient in front of just a letter, a variable, is 1, so 1 times 2 is 2. And then y times x, we can write that as y times x, but we'll put it in alphabetical order, so we'll say x times y. And then y times 4y, well, coefficient's 1, 1 times 4 is 4, and y times y is y squared. From here, we'll combine like terms. We can see that we only have one term with the x squared in it, so that's going to be 6x squared. And then we have, notice we have uh, 12xy and 2xy. Those are like terms because they have the same variables with the same exponents on them. So I have 12xy's and 2xy's, which makes 14xy's. And then I've got the 4y squared, which that is the only term with a y squared in it. And so this is the answer to number two. Again, this is a little bit more difficult problem because it has two variables in it. We're not going to be doing too many of those this year. More of a focus on something like number, like number one here. Okay. All right. Let's go ahead and move on to the next uh, thing we're gonna uh, we're actually gonna skip over this. You may be familiar with the idea of foil. Foil is essentially what I was doing um, when I was uh, in a previous example. I don't want to get into that. You'll see you'll see that in a second here. Let's go ahead and look at x minus nine times x minus eight as another example. Okay, x minus nine times x minus 8, okay? And I'm going to just give you one term. Ignore kind of what's going on in this slide, okay? I just want you to follow this procedure and do it this way, okay? So we would say uh, x times the second term, x minus 8, and then negative 9 times x minus 8. Remember, the first term and the first term is broken up into the, the two parts, so x and minus 9. And the x minus 8 is written out both times on each one. Then we'll go ahead and distribute. x times x is x squared. x times negative 8 is negative 8x. Negative 9 times x is negative 9x. And negative 9 times negative 8 which is 72, positive 72. Remember, you're multiplying the negative as well, so carry that negative in there as well. Combining like terms, I don't have any other terms that have an x squared on it, so I'm just going to bring that down. The negative 8x and the negative 9x, that turns into negative 17x, and then the 72 is all by itself, so that goes at the end there, and that is my answer for that example. Okay. So again, there's different ways to do it, but really, we're going to hone in on this method because this is going to help us understand um, when we go to undo this idea of multiplication. Later on, we're actually going to take this term and move backwards to get to multiplying binomials again. So we're going to move from here to here. Instead of moving forward, we're going to move backwards. And seeing it this way is going to help us really understand that in a more in-depth way. So we're going to go ahead and, and ignore all of this. and. Maybe in time we can talk about uh, how to do that. But for now, we're just going to focus on this method. Go ahead and put uh, these two practice problems on the left-hand side and then see how you do after you've done them. For number three, we've got x plus 11 times x minus 6. And I'm, gonna, uh, I'm just going to go through this one um, 
in the method I showed you, in the next one, I'm going to give you the answer only. Remember, rewrite this as x times x minus 6 plus 11 times x minus 6. When I distribute in, x times x is x squared. x times negative 6 is negative 6x. 11 times x, that's a positive now, so plus 11x. And then positive 11 times negative 6 is negative 66. Combining like terms, these are my only like terms here. So we get x squared plus 5x minus 66 as our final answer, okay? That was number three. And then number four, just giving you the answer, should have been x squared minus 19x plus 84. That's the final answer on number four. I'm not going through the step-by-step -step process. You should have already done that. This is just to check your answer. If you, don't, uh, if you didn't get that right, make sure you reach out to me so we can go over it together, okay? All right, going on to uh, another method. I'm going to kind of fly through this idea here because it's just, you don't have to write this down, okay? I just want you to see something here. If I say, what is the area of a rectangle? Remember, the area of a rectangle is length times width, just like our first problem today. So we can just say 8 times 7 and get an answer that's 56, okay? But what if we broke it down into multiple rectangles? So if I were to cut this, let me minimize my uh, screen here. If I were to cut this into pieces, so instead of saying 8 all the way across the top length, I broke it up to say 5 plus 3 because 5 plus 3 is 8. So what's that length? Well, this length is 5 plus 3 is 8. That makes sense. And what if I cut the other one to say 5 plus 2? Well, I could find the area of the entire thing by finding the area of each piece and then adding them up. So 5 times 5 is 25. 5 times 3 is 15. 2 times 5 is 10. 2 times 3 is 6. Then we add all those together, and lo and behold, we end up with 56 again. Okay? It's just another way of looking at uh, area, which is really area is just multiplication anyways. Okay. Now, why would you want that? Because sometimes you don't know, you don't know all the, the entire length in numeric values. We have it written as a variable. Again, you don't need to write this down. This is just looking at it here. So if I have the area of a rectangle that's uh, the length is x plus four and the width is x plus six, okay, that would imply that the area is x plus four times x plus six because let me write it down here for you. I have a rectangle with the length of x plus 4 and a height of x plus 6. Okay, so length times width. That makes sense. Now, we know how to do this based on our previous um, method. And I'm going to go ahead and do that right now with the steps that we talked about. Uh, we're going to rewrite this as x times x plus 6 plus 4 times x plus 6. We'll distribute that in. So x times x is x squared. x times 6 is 6x. 4 times x is 4x. And 4 times 6 is 24. Then we can combine like terms. So we end up with x squared plus 10x plus 24. That is my area. But we can look at it in a slightly different way. Okay? We could look at this as a picture that we broke apart. You see the length is x plus 4, so I can put the x here and the 4 here, like this. So what's this total length? Well, it's this plus this, x plus 4. And then going down this way, this is x plus 6. And then if I find the area of each thing, then add them up, I'll get the area of the whole thing. So what is x times x? That's going to be x squared. What is x times 4? That's 4x. What is 6 times x? That's 6x. And then 6 times 4 is 24. Then we can add those four things together and then combine like terms. And so you can see, actually, that that produces the same exact answer that we had before. Okay, So this is called like a, a, an area model, a way to approach it geometrically rather than approaching it analytically. Again, your focus throughout the future of mathematics will be on this method, okay? But this helps us understand it a little bit more, okay? So I want you to go ahead and try doing this, maybe using both methods. Definitely do the first method, and then see if you can handle the second method. And then when we come back, once you hit uh, play, we'll go over it. So for this problem, let's see, get to the top of the page here. For this problem, we have 2x plus 3 
times uh, 3x minus 1. All right, let me make my screen bigger here. We're, in the way that we did it before, we would break it apart. So it'd be 2x times 3x minus 1 plus 3 times 3x minus 1. So no different than what we did before. Notice I have coefficients now. I have numbers in front of the variables. That's okay. We can still do this. 2x times 3x. Well, 2 times 3 is 6. x times x is x squared. 2x times negative 1. Well, that's just going to be negative 2x. And then 3 times 3x is going to be 9x. And then the 3 times the negative 1 is going to be negative 3. And then combining like terms, we've got 6x squared by itself. The negative 2x and the 9x turns into 7x. And then minus 3. So that's my answer using analytical methods. Now let's go ahead and look at a graphical approach or a geometric approach, if you would. We would draw a rectangle, a big rectangle here. And we would break it apart. So this is going to be 2x and plus 3. And then this is going to be 3x and minus 1. And we're going to break it into something like four rectangles. So what is 3x times 2x? The area of this guy is going to be 6x squared. 3x times 3 is 9x. Negative 1 times 2x is negative 2x. And negative 1 times 3 is negative 3. Um, so then I can combine those. And you can see that those are the same terms that are up here. So I can combine them and get the same answer. Okay. So with that said, two different methods on multiplying binomials. Hopefully you have a good understanding of them. Uh, here are two practice problems for you. I want you to try them. And then I'm just going to provide the answers here when you're done so you can see if you got it right. So go ahead and hit pause and then push play when you have your work done. So the answer for number five should have been x squared minus 5x minus 50. And then for number six, you should have gotten uh, oops, 8x squared. And then I'm going to do a little bit of work here. It's going to be minus 16x minus 24x plus 48. That should have been an intermediate step. So you should have gotten 8x squared minus 40x plus 48. Again, if you have any questions for me or if you're not understanding this, you need to reach out and ask for help. Uh, otherwise, I hope you understand multiplying binomials, and I will talk to you later.